Right now at noon, the western part of the state is experiencing flooding after almost a foot of rain fell in some areas overnight. Plus how the city of Madison is preparing for possibly more rain tonight and fans from around the country gathering in Detroit to remember the Queen of Soul. This is News 3 at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 on this Tuesday afternoon. We'll get to those stories in a bit. But first, let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Chris Reese, a look at your first alert forecast. We had it a week ago. They had it to the north of us last night. They had it to the north of us last night. We are hoping that that's not over us tonight. But nonetheless, we continue to track that possibility for heavy rain along with strong to severe thunderstorms. It is an alert day once again for the strong and severe thunderstorms along with that possibility of some heavy rain. Here's the flash flood watch that's include that includes us here in Madison that has also been expanded back to the south and west just a little bit. That bright green that's the flood warning from uh, the flooding that occurred last night. Radar estimates show anywhere from about five to seven inches of rain, although reports came in upwards of 12 and 13 inches of rain at some of those areas last night with the training of thunderstorms. Now we have a chance for severe thunderstorms and Madison is in the bullseye of that for this afternoon. This is an enhanced risk which is a level three out of the five different levels of severe weather tiers uh, that you can get into. And already we're watching some of those showers and thunderstorms develop back to our west and move into an environment that is very unstable right now. So Mark, as we do go through the rest of the day, look again at these tropical dew points right here. We're going to be tracking all of these thunderstorms and how they develop and any impacts it has for us. And of course, here in about 10 minutes or so towards the middle of the show, I'll of course break down the impact and timing with what we could see with some of these strong, severe thunderstorms. Timing later. is important. Yes, sir. All right. Well, check back, Chris. Thank you. My pleasure. Top of the news, people in Juneau County are seeing the aftermath from those heavy rains last night. This is right outside of Waniwak on Highway 33. The road has washed away, creating a sinkhole right before entering town. Residents are receiving evacuation notices and are saying that a lot of the roads are flooded and impassable, leaving people stranded. Other parts of western Wisconsin experiencing flooding. The National Weather Service says La Crosse, Vernon, and Monroe counties were hit with 5 to 11 inches of rain. This is Coon Valley, just south of La Crosse. A bridge was washed out. Cattle walking around town. The storm also knocked out some power in the area. There are several highways closed because of flooding after several inches of rain fell in Sauk and Adams County overnight. Estimated rainfall amounts of 5 to 11 inches or more have already fallen from Wisconsin Dells westward to just south of La Crosse. Parts of County Road G, Golden Avenue, County Road XX, County Road H, and Highway 33 are all closed due to flooding. Adams County officials ask anyone with flood damage to report it to the Adams County Emergency Management at 608-339-4248. We have a full list of road closures on channel3000.com. Meanwhile, in Madison City, crews have been working around the clock since Friday, working through the night on 12-hour shifts. The Madison Streets Department says the city is looking at close to a quarter of a million sandbags already filled. We were there to see the assembly line where crews work to get sandbags filled and distributed. Officials say today's rainfall is not to be taken lightly. They are, they'll be monitoring the situation throughout the night to see if even more needs to be done. Today is the critical day. If we get through the forecast today, we've got two or three dry days ahead of us. That should get us out of the near-term crisis mode and get us more into a public works issue, but something that our residents should start to see uh, go away. 700 volunteers have registered through the city to help out so far, but hundreds more have been helping out. At this hour, more volunteers are being asked to sign up. There's still roads closed in Dane County from last week's flooding. Parts of East Johnson, East Main, East Mifflin Streets, and Marston Avenue all remain closed. Highway 14, as well as parts of County Roads KP, J, G, and W closed. So far, there have been more than 1,200 reports of damage in Dane County. In other news, we are learning more about the accused gunman who killed two people and wounded 10 others before killing himself at a video game tournament in Florida. CBS News has learned through 24-year-old David Katz's parents' divorce records that as a teenager, Katz was diagnosed with chronic low-grade depression, was hospitalized twice for mental illness, and was prescribed antipsychotic and antidepressants. Authorities say Katz had been eliminated from a Madden football video tournament Sunday, 
when he opened fire. He was a minor at the time of his psychological treatment. Investigators are trying to determine if that treatment would have been flagged during his gun purchases earlier this month. After two days of silence, President Trump offered words of tribute following the death of Senator John McCain. The president's sentiments came in the wake of mounting criticism as events celebrating McCain's life are about to get underway in his home state of Arizona and at the nation's capital. We uh, very much appreciate everything that Senator McCain has done for our country. This Trump not even addressing when John was sick and dying and this and this refusal to call him a hero just i mean it sounds petulant it sounds childish the president issued a presidential proclamation lowering u.s flags until mccain is laid to rest on sunday it said quote despite our differences and uh, on policy and politics senator mccain will lie in state at the arizona state capitol wednesday on what would have been his 82nd birthday People from all over the country are descending on Detroit to pay their respects to Aretha Franklin. The Queen of Soul died earlier this month, and now her hometown is honoring her in a big way, starting with a public visitation today. The doors of the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History will be open to the public for 12 hours today and tomorrow, part of a four-day celebration of Franklin's life and her legacy in her hometown. At least 19 artists have been tapped to perform during her funeral Friday, including Faith Hill, Stevie Wonder, and Jennifer Hudson. Speakers include former President Bill Clinton. And there's more to come on News 3 at noon. Up next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. All aboard. Grab your train ticket, because we're serving up a melting you mouth steak. That's dining car fancy. If you've ever had the opportunity to have dinner in the dining car of a train, then you'll probably have some pretty fun memories of it. Now, I'm not talking about grabbing a hot dog and a bag of chips at the concession stand, but rather 
sitting down to a complete meal in the dining car. The recipe we're making today is inspired by just that. Plus, it's perfect for this time of year when you want to serve something special. The first thing we're going to do is mix some softened butter with some minced garlic, a squeeze of lemon juice, and chopped parsley. Then we spoon that down the center of a piece of wax paper and roll it up, creating a log. While the butter chills in the fridge, we'll cook up a couple of stripper ribeye steaks that we've seasoned. When the chilled seasoned butter hits the hot steak and begins to melt, get ready to take a bite of the most flavorful steak you've ever tasted. To get the recipe for our melt-in-your-mouth steak, all you have to do is visit our website and look for what we call dining car steak. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a dining car fancy way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. All right, Howard, thank you. There's more to come on News 3 at noon. Up next, meteorologist Chris Reese is tracking more possible storms for this afternoon and evening. We'll have more in our first alert forecast right after this. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrials up to 25 and a half points. The NASDAQ up eight and a half. Let's check in now with Q106 from Dr. Pam Yaki. I bet there's some storm damage up north in the fields. Oh, man. Oh, man. I've been getting phone calls from my, uh, my listeners over by La Crosse and that kind of terrible, terrible situation. My in-laws happen to live in southeast Minnesota, so uh, this whole latest round of uh, storms has got a lot of folks, again, back on on the defense when it comes to Mother Nature. We'll wait and see how fast uh, the stories kind of mount up. Our markets today are not necessarily paying so much attention to the heavy rains that have come across the upper Midwest, but instead uh, the Farm Progress Show gets started today down in Boone, Iowa. One of the first reports that was out is the planting intentions for 2019. Looks like farmers are going to increase their corn acreage by somewhere around 2%. Winter wheat acres are also going up a 
probably closer to 3%, and that will come at the expense of soybeans. Now, obviously, this is very early on. The other thing farmers are talking about, the announcement yesterday by Sonny Perdue, our U.S. Ag Secretary, on the uh, assistance that uh, they're kicking out. Uh, as far as farmers in Wisconsin are concerned, it amounts to $1.65 per bushel on soybeans for half of this year's actual production. Corn, a penny a bushel for half of this year's production. Dairy farmers, 12 cents a hundredweight based on your margin protection plan production. And uh, if you aren't involved in that program, the USDA can still calculate it. I talked to one of my dairy analysts and he said to me, it's nice that you're thinking about a comedy routine for your farm show, Pam. He uh, was kind of kidding me about how low those numbers are for dairy farmers specifically when it comes to that uh, 12 cents a hundredweight. And they're capping it at $125,000 per entity. And again, folks, if you only understand how much money a farm can go through in a matter of one month's time, that really is just a drop in the bucket. Uh, dairy products prices today in Chicago. Barrel cheese unchanged at 161. 40 pound block cheese up a penny and a half at 166 and three quarters. Double A butter half cent higher at 230 a pound. Maybe we'll get a chance to talk a little bit more about that assistance program tomorrow, Mark, and give folks some of the some of the details on sign up and the rest of that. So right now I think everybody is still focused in very much on that major, major weather swarm that hit us earlier right. this morning. And maybe unfortunately more on the way. So <sighs> keep an eye on that. All right. Take care. Yeah. See you tomorrow. And Chris is here now. I guess everyone wants to know how much, where, and when. Well, we're keeping a very close eye on that. Sometimes it's impossible to truly tell sure. how much, where, and when, but we know the threat is there for strong to severe thunderstorms, which is why we continue with our slew of alert days that we have had lately. But today, once again, and another, or an, an an additional alert day. There we go. And that's going to last as we go through the rest of tonight and into tomorrow with the potential of some flooding as well. We still have that flash flood watch. It's going to go through seven o'clock tomorrow morning. Flood warnings up in the counties that really saw some of that rain last night. Now radar estimates are only showing about five to seven inches of rain there, but we know from reports that people saw anywhere from five to 12 or even 13 inches of rain in those areas. And I want to show you just a radar loop of how this all kind of happened last night. You had the first band of showers and thunderstorms that really kind of came through. That brought a lot of the wind damage upstate. Um, and then we have a trailing line. So watch the wind damage come on through. Watch this trailing line develop. That's what really put down all of that water yesterday. Now over the past three hours, we have been paying attention to showers and thunderstorms that have been developing back to our west, and they are moving into an environment that is rather unstable. Here we are with that enhanced risk, a level three out of five for strong to severe thunderstorms as we go into the afternoon. Right now, Madison is in the epicenter of that. We're going to keep a close eye on these showers and thunderstorms as they move in. Of course, scattered storms and heavy rain will be the on going threat through tomorrow morning. At the onset, we're looking for damaging wind gusts, large hail, that's a good threat today, along with the possibility of isolated tornadoes similar to what we saw last night, which of course was a busy night for a lot of folks, so we're keeping a close eye on that as well. Let's start you with the currents out there. Temperatures are into the low 80s right now. You factor in the uh, dew points. Dew points are into the low 70s, even some upper 70s showing up. So you have very buoyant air that is essentially ready to explode and form thunderstorms. So here's the cloud cover. We had that sunshine earlier and watch how back to the west. As soon as that sun came up, it blossomed with showers and thunderstorms. We have not been tapped into with the showers and thunderstorms yet, but we're going to be very soon. So already we are tracking that back to our west. Here's what's going to happen as we go through the night. Watch these showers and thunderstorms pop up and then gradually just kind of work their way to the south, bringing chances for some very heavy rainfall as they do so going all the way into tomorrow morning. We take you hour by hour here at home. Here we are getting you towards 8 o'clock, towards 10 o'clock. Those showers move on through with the chance for some heavy rain. Here's that same model showing you its thoughts on who gets what and how much. It gives us two inches of rain here in Madison. That just went away on us. Let's go ahead and bring that back forward so you can see that rainfall potential once again, but essentially it shows anywhere from about uh, two to four inches of rain.
rain in some spots and that's of course what we have to keep a very close eye on. Now once that gets on through here, we will have high pressure taking over. That'll dry us out for a couple of days, which of course we do need that dry couple of days. This afternoon though, it will be wet. Once we get through that dry couple of days, we'll also see more chances for some showers and thunderstorms towards the weekend. Now, right now, uh, those are a pretty decent chance for some showers and thunderstorms. I haven't fine tuned anything in terms of amounts yet because we've got to get through today's storm system first. Now, a little bit of good news though is when we see more of the sunshine this week, it'll also be much cooler and less humid, so it'll feel good after we've gone through this emotional roller coaster of tracking showers and thunderstorms over and over again. But we really can't let our guard down because more chances of rain do come through as we get you through the weekend and into next week as yeah, well. It is very tropical out there. It's it is very not going to take much. Exactly. All right. Thank you, Chris. There's more to come on News 3 at noon. Up next, dietitian Michelle Swader is here to answer your diet and health questions. The number 270-9933 will take your questions right after this. News Dietitian Michelle Swader is here to answer your health and diet questions, 270-9933. Good to see you. Hello. Back to school is here. Yes, Looking right around the corner now. Healthy after school snacks. Yes. Um, these are great for after school. They're great for before practice. Great for part of your lunch. And when people are packing for their kids, they can pack their own lunch instead of having to run to the restaurants. Um, traditionally, you know, we obviously like them to be fresh fruits and vegetables. Even better still, now they have some that are pre-packaged for you, so you don't even have to do a lot of the peeling and the cutting. Um, whether you go with fruits or vegetables, if you feel like you need some dip to help <laughs> kind of wash it down, that's, cut it, cut it that's down. still okay. That still makes it a healthy snack. So there's a lot of different varieties out there now where you save some of the prep work when you even try to do fruits and vegetables. The good news also is if you're going for something a little more processed, it's not necessarily all bad anymore. Um, so some of the things that we want to look for are things that are a little bit more natural with less added sugar. 
So a lot of the old-fashioned granola bars. Um, a lot of sugar. Have a lot of sugar in them. And so now they have some healthy alternatives, things with cheese and nuts. Um, some of the dried fruit might be a little bit sweet, but on balance, it's still much better than a sugary bar. Um, another thing that's really good is peanut butter. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple different options now. Um, they do have some kind of pre-packaged slices, which are really great to throw in your office or in your backpack. Um, they do have some that are, they come with pretzels and chips, but a better choice even still would be just to have that with some carrots or some celery. And Cheetos are not good. They are not the best choice, yes. <laughs> and there's uh, new cheese products. Yes, a, a very new thing coming out on the market is kind of baked or dehydrated cheeses. Um, there's a few different forms. This one is actually a Wisconsin company, and they are in the form of a granola bar, salty, crunchy snack. Um, there's some other forms, too, and little crisp crackers and, and little But kind things, of things balls. can be packaged. Pretzels are good. There's other Pretzel, stuff. Pretzels are good. There's some other options that can be um, a little more whole grain, have a little more fiber. So you really have to read the label and the ingredient list. All right, let's go to the calls. We'll start with Mary in Mount Horeb. Hi, Mary. Hi. Hi, what's your question? An eggplant. How do you cook it? Well, it depends on how you like it, but there's a couple different ways. The easiest way, probably in the summer, if you've already got the grill going, just use a little bit of olive oil and grill it. It Whole? doesn't, it, um, sliced. It, slice it up. Slice it, yep, kind of thick slices. If you overcook it, that can, it can turn really mushy and wet very fast. Another trick would be to kind of salt it and let some of the water kind of drain about 20 minutes before you put it on the grill. It keeps some of the form a little bit better so it doesn't turn into mush. And it's good for you. It's very good for you. A lot of fiber, good antioxidants. All right, and keep these in mind if you're packing a snack. Yes. These are, are these good or not? They are. Um, Garlic Parmesan a pretzel bit, chips, <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're a little bit low in fiber, so one of the other ones that have a little bit more whole grain, a little more protein, a little more fiber, it just makes it a little bit more well-rounded snack. And again, there are so many new products out there. Read the um, labels. Take your time the next time you go to the grocery store. Give yourself a little time and, and maybe try something new. Okay. That's our time for now. Thanks for calling in. We'll see you next month. Let's get a yes, thank you. final check of the forecast. Here's Chris. All right, we continue to track that possibility of some strong, severe thunderstorms. A lot of those will really begin to increase nice. right around dinner time and then into the overnight hours. That's when we really could see that potential for some truly heavy rainfall around here. We're looking at anywhere from an additional one to three inches, if not locally more, if you get the training of thunderstorms again. At the onset of these showers and thunderstorms, we'll look for the possibility of isolated spin up tornadoes, large hail, and the possibility of damaging winds as well. Keep in mind. Given how saturated the ground is, it will not take much to knock over large trees. All right, keep an eye on the weather for at least the next 24 hours. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at 4. Have a great afternoon. Making plans that are weather dependent? Get an accurate 12 hour, even a 10 day forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather app and start planning.